Thanks for joining us here on Doran Sports. I'm joined now by former international leg spin bowler Stuart McGill. Thanks for coming on the show. No worries, mate. It's been a long time. Stuart, a couple of years. Yes. Uh, today, mate, uh, semi-final appearance. How much of a contrast is it from playing Sydney Grey comp now as opposed to the Big Bash a couple of months ago? Um, look, uh, one thing that uh, I've been talking a lot about the last couple of days, actually, is uh, the strength of Sydney grade cricket at the moment. Um, everybody sort of makes a joke about, you know, getting a game for New South Wales and getting your baggy green presented alongside it. But uh, there's no way that any other competition in Australia or, or the world, for that matter, is as strong at a grade level, at a club level, as, as Sydney grade cricket at the moment. You know, the, all four of the clubs that remain in this competition um, have, you know, quality, quality players in them. And um, uh, that's certainly um, different to the last time I was going around in grade cricket. Um, I think the strength of uh, Sydney grade cricket is very, very good. And, and it's no surprise that we're filling up half the state sides. Do you prepare differently, though, for a, for a grade game as you as you would have for an international game? I, I, look, um, since I started playing again, uh, I've prepared very differently. <laughs> um, I don't really prepare. <laughs> um, I, I make sure that I'm, um, uh, you know, as pain free as possible by. Um, doing as little as possible during the week so uh, as you get older your joints uh, are what let you down and, and my knees are, are not great so I make sure I don't stand up or run around too much during the week and um, hopefully I'll make it through the weekend. Does it frustrate you though that your career was cut short uh, by an injury that you, you yeah. came back at 2007 and was forced to have your uh, your tour in the West Indies shortened? Uh, man, there's absolutely no doubt that that was uh, Incredibly frustrating. There was no way that I was, uh, you know, due to finish then. And um, I, I'd sort of, I'd never played against uh, England in, in England. I'd never played against New Zealand. I'd never played in South Africa. I'd never played in India. And all four of those goals would have been met if I'd played for another, you know, 12 months. Mm. So um, anybody who suggests that I retired because I didn't want to play anymore has got rocks in their head. So it's incredibly frustrating for me. And um, uh, I'm glad that I'm able to, you know, play a little bit now. The Big Bash was a great, great, mm. great opportunity. If Shane Keith Warren hadn't have played for Australia, you would have, as you say, been able to most probably mm. tour the world uh, for longer than you did. Uh, does, it, does it frustrate you or does it somewhat, uh, are you happy for him or are you disappointed that you didn't have the career that you could have? No, no, look, um, uh, there's no doubt that if uh, he hadn't been around, I wouldn't have played um, uh, because he opened the door. Uh, spin bowling was pretty much on the back burner uh, before Warney came along. So mm. um, my style of bowling uh, benefited from having uh, somebody as uh, effective and uh, high profile as him, um, you know, giving an opportunity to, to other spin bowlers and, and, you know, I doubt very much whether I would have played half the tests I played or, or at all if he wasn't around. Do you have a, a particular moment that stands out in memory of a, a career highlight? Oh, look, uh, you know, um, I'm old, um, so the only memory I can remember is the last one, which is the Sixers, uh, the Big Bash final. That was really cool. Um, it's a shame it wasn't at the SCG. But, um, uh, you know, they earned the right to host the final and um, I was... It, it was right up there with with other um, you know trophies that I've won through my career. It was a good one. You talk about the strength of the Sydney Grey competition earlier in our discussion. What about the strength of the Australia spin bowling stocks at the moment? I think, um, look, if I'm honest, I don't, I don't think it's great. Um, I think uh, um, you know a couple of guys have have done good jobs. Um, what I've got to come to terms with now is that the job they're doing is different to the one that I did. So um, that's fine. They do that very very well. They're, they're not necessarily going to strike, um, you know, be great strike bowlers, but they do a good job in a team that's very different to the one I played in, so you know, I should probably appreciate that. Um, as long as we pick our best bowlers, you know, that's cool uh, by me. If, if the best uh, best five bowlers, four or five bowlers are all quicks, so I should pick all quick. so. And uh, you're here donning the Sydney University cap in a semi-final against North Sydney. North Sydney won for 43, chasing 232. How confident are you going into tomorrow's uh, day? I don't really ever think about that, to be honest. Um, uh, I'm, I'm confident that that total is, is defendable. Um, whether or not we do it or not, I, I'm not sure. But, um, uh, you know, it's a very good batting wicket. And, uh, you know, I think... Um, They'll probably have to get themselves out. Uh, we've got a great attack. There's a lot of bowlers in there who can who can take wickets, and that's all we'll be trying to do tomorrow. So, um, 2:30 is enough uh, to play with. Whether or not we defend it, 
let's see what happens tomorrow. Well, thanks very much for joining us and giving your time today, and uh, good luck for tomorrow. Cheers.